I had a massive, massive deer in the headlights moment and I felt so stupid. At one point we were visiting a patient who had some anal bleeding. This is how I got that shot. Jesus Christ, I hope no one walks in. All of the optimistic, positive feelings I was having about uni last week have left my body. Monday week three, it didn't really take that long. Firstly, there's another lockdown in Melbourne. It's only short, it's only five days, so it's not really a big deal. Normally in med, most of the content I don't find excruciatingly hard. Yes, it's hard. Yes, I have to focus to get it. But generally, if I focus, I can understand most of the concepts except ECGs. ECGs are one of the most torturous thing. I don't get them. I just had a lecture that went for an hour about them. I don't think I could tell you one thing about ECG except that 10 leads make up 12 leads somehow. What the fuck? Once I've been completely sodomized by a topic like that, then my mind leaves ahead. And then I start thinking about how the end of the year exam is a short answer exam. I haven't done a short answer exam since high school. So am I gonna be able to pass a short answer exam? Does it really feel like it at this point? And then on top of that, we have to still do all of the physical examination stuff. So how am I gonna find fucking time to learn the ECGs, go through all the lecture content, practice my physical exams and fucking pass the year. It just feels impossible. I know that all of these feelings have just been triggered by me not understanding one lecture. So I need to chill out and recognize that that's what's going on and that I'm not stupid. And I do get stuff. It's just one tricky lecture has gotten me feeling this way. I think some of the best advice we got was not to focus at the end of the year. Just focus on getting to the end of the day and the end of the week, which I need to keep reminding myself of because yes, everything at the end of the year feels impossible and I just don't understand how we're gonna get all of that work done, but we will get it all done. I'm feeling better now that the shock of that lecture has worn off. So I'm gonna to continue to try to get some work done instead of being a distracted mess. I had a lecture this morning on venipuncture which is when you have to insert a needle into that area of the inside of your elbow to draw blood, like when you go to the blood bank. I even have a hard time looking at the inside of my elbow and touching that area because I'm just so freaked out by the vein there. When I was watching that lecture on how to do the vena punctures, I could feel my heart rate rising. So I had to try to control my breathing. So I didn't start associating that lecture with heightened breathing and anxious feelings. So a video I uploaded just went live. And whenever I do this, I just turn into a stat checking zombie and I can't tear myself away from the YouTube statistics page. What an unproductive Monday. I'm pretty disappointed with how I've gone today. It's 12 o'clock and I haven't studied this late all semester. Left to my own devices at home, I always study late. I just can't help it. I can't get stuck into work any earlier than like, I don't know, three or four. I'm gonna hit the hay now. I don't have to get up particularly early tomorrow morning. Got class at 12, but I'm working from home again due to the pandemic. I got through a fair few lectures just now, but then they started to get a bit more pharmacology-like, learning drug names, etc. And that just ain't happening on a minimal sleep. So I'll have to start again, refresh tomorrow. I just had my shoot called Ethical Practice. And in today's theme, we were going over confidentiality, which my ears always prick up when we're going over confidentiality, because obviously I'm doing YouTube and my biggest fear in life is to accidentally compromise my patient's confidentiality. I just don't want that to happen and I don't want to do the wrong thing. I'm glad that this weighs on my mind so much. I'm glad that I'm always considering the ethics of having a YouTube channel or a social media and being a med student. The weight of that is not lost on me. I do think that the future of public health is social media. Everyone these days gets their health information on Instagram, whether you like it or not, whether that's factual or not, that's where people get it. So if doctors aren't posting on social media, aren't building online communities where people can learn to trust them, then the misinformation is gonna win. That's when the anti-vaxxers are gonna win. I'm gonna to go to the hospital tomorrow because I missed placement on Monday. And so I'm gonna make up for it tomorrow. And I am excited to get out of the house. I feel like I'm gonna be in such a better mood. I'm making a Japanese curry for dinner tonight. And if you haven't had this curry, especially if you're a student, highly recommend you try it because it's really quick, really easy, really delicious. I'm making a double batch because I don't like cooking more often than I have to and I just freeze the second half. And I'm using just onions, potatoes, carrots, chicken breast, and then you just put it all together in a pot and then you boil it and then cook through the vegetables and that's the whole thing. This is one of my most favorite items that I own. This is my Maggi mix. It comes with all these different attachments, but the one that I use to slice is this one. And it'll cut all of those vegetables in about two, not even two minutes. So it really saves a lot of time and effort and makes everything so quick and easy. I'm gonna try to give you a one-handed Maggi Mix demonstration. So you just, oh fuck. Okay, I have an onion. 
it's got two things so if you've got skinny things you just have to take out that but this onion's a bit bigger so you take out the wide mouth part put in my onion probably probably dangerous to put my hand in there pretend i didn't do that then you put this lid on and click and it sliced your whole onion This is the first time this week that I've gotten dressed and it feels so good. Yesterday we had a class that was talking about one of our assessments called a long case. While we've heard snippets of the fact that we are going to have a long case assessment and some of the older year levels talking about it, we weren't actually given any information from the school yet. So that was our first introduction into what it actually is. And so how the long case assessment works is that it's going to build up to it by the end of the year. So it's going to be incrementally getting harder. What we're building up to is that at the end of the year, we're going to have an hour with a patient that we're going to be asking them a full history. We're going to be examining them and then thinking about the differential diagnoses, di the differential diagnoses. So what we think they have and what other things it could be. Then we have to present that back in 12 minutes to our examiner who is going to be a doctor as well. So then we have to go over like Shirley Temple had a history of cardiac risk factors and she presented with chest pain and then going through her whole history after that systematically from start to finish. It sounds like quite a challenging assessment and one that you definitely need to work on all year. All day yesterday because I was at home and I feel more okay with procrastinating when I'm at home. I was on YouTube doing some, what I called market research, but really was just me watching other med YouTubers and seeing what they were talking about. I started watching a lot of productivity ones. So heaps of ones about how people organize their notes through Notion. And for a moment, by the end of watching them, I felt like, wow, am I just doing medicine wrong? Like I don't have this tracker thing set up. Does that mean I'm being ineffective with my study time? And it really got to me for a second. But then I thought about it longer and I realized that I'm just not that type of person. I am not a type A personality. I don't really get a rush out of organizing things like that. I don't enjoy organizing things like that. I prefer for things to be more relaxed and day by day. I feel like I'm wasting my time when I do spend time organizing things to that extent and I never stick to it. I've made it this far. I've had a good work-life balance. I feel happy and I feel content and my grades are good. So really organizing my lectures and my revision to that extent is just not something that works for me and my personality type. To me, spending 20 minutes to an hour every week just organizing my lecture tracker or whatever I need to organize is not worth the time. I would rather be spending that time studying. Something that I think is important to explain to you guys who maybe don't make YouTube videos is that YouTubers of a certain niche, so for example, med YouTubers, what they do to decide what videos to make next and what videos are gonna do well is they go on other med YouTubers channels and they look at their videos and they see which videos did well and then they recreate those videos or make a video that's very similar. So. What you end up with is just an echo chamber of the same ideas from the same person um, with slight variations because that's what gets searched and that's what get results. So it really makes it feel like there's only one right way to do things, but it's just not true. That's not how it actually works in the real world. So it's just good to be mindful of that. I'm not saying that those methods aren't great because they're fantastic for a certain kind of person, but everyone is so different and there's so much variation in the way people study that it's not a one size fits all. Out of all of the med YouTubers, Ali Abdal is one of the number one guys, him and Dr. Mike, but they make very different kinds of content. Ali Abdal sets the pace for almost all of the other YouTube channels. Everyone will make videos very similar to Ali's because then people, people like Ali's videos. So it makes sense to make videos like Ali's videos. This is no shade to Ali. Like obviously I love his channel. I watch it all the time. I find him extremely inspiring. But what I've realized is that my study style is completely opposite to his study style. So me watching his productivity videos, it doesn't actually do anything for me except stress me out because we just have different ways of learning. And it actually took me a long time to understand that and be okay with it. So if you watch a lot of productivity videos and you feel like maybe you're not living up to that standard and you don't particularly like making Notion trackers or Google Sheets trackers or what have you, it's totally fine. You're allowed to not like them and that doesn't mean that you're studying wrong. You just have your own way of studying. I've got my clinical skills tutor later in the day. I'm a bit disappointed because it's obviously not gonna be in person, it's gonna be on Zoom. So the part where I get to learn the exam is again gonna be delayed, but we'll figure it out. I love you. Whoa. 
Lockdown is over. I'm so happy. I'm so excited to go back to the gym tomorrow. So happy to get into the regular flow of doing things and going out for dinner. Yay! What is it? Why are you crying, little beanie? What is it? What do you want me to get? Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. You want this ball? <laughs> oh, God. Just gonna reply to some Insta DMs now before I have dinner. And I prefer to do it on a computer because it's just fast and I can give a much better reply. Definitely one of my favorite parts of the day. I finally feel like I understand YouTube and filming and being comfortable in front of the camera enough to really enjoy the process. Before now, I don't think I was really like truly enjoying it. I knew the payoff would be good at the end of the day and I believed in my message and I believed in sharing my story, but because I felt like I was so bad at it, I didn't enjoy it. But now it's getting to the point where some of the things are instinctual. So it feels good to be finally enjoying it and enjoying the process. Oh my God. I don't think you can see that. Hang on. I made it. Woo! Yeah, come here. I know. Oh my God. 2023. Woo! I realized last night that I really need to prioritize reading in the semester. I've been saving reading for just before bed, but I'm so tired lately because I'm actually getting out of the house so that I can only read for like five minutes before I feel really tired and want to fall asleep. I need to start reading during the day more and not viewing it as a distraction from my uni work, but as something that I need to prioritize because it's beneficial to me in the long term. I thought yesterday was pretty successful. We did see a lot of patients. I think I saw about three and my friend who I was with also saw three. We also saw a wound cleaning. We saw someone clean a wound. So that was mission accomplished on that one as well. We didn't get involved yet. I just wanted to observe a few before I offered up my services of trying to help out. I don't know what I was expecting, but it was a pretty big wound. And the wound care nurse who we were following, she was like measuring the wound using the tweezers that are provided in the kit. And she like stuck the tweezers inside the wound to measure how deep it was. That part made me kind of queasy because it just looked really painful and it made me wince. I think today I'm going to spend as much of the day as I can on the ward seeing patient and practicing taking histories. But then I also want to go to the library today as well because I start early tomorrow at 6.30 because we have the ward rounds. So I need to get to bed earlier tonight because I haven't really been sleeping that early. I have been reading A Promised Lamb by... <laughs> not, a, <laughs> not A Promised Lamb. A Promised Land by Barack Obama for about six weeks now. I like it. I'm really enjoying the book, but at the same time, it's very political, obviously. And I'm just not that well versed with the American politics in terms of like how they pass legislation and all the ins and outs of it. So there's parts of the book that I get lost in because I just don't quite understand the language. And then I lose interest in the book for a minute and then I have to retry to read it. I'm glad to be reading it, but I am also looking forward to reading like a fiction book or something like that, that I can fly through. Today was quite a productive day. We got a list of people that we wanted to see from the nurse and then we went around to all those beds, but we were kind of unlucky in that a lot of the people weren't there anymore. They were like, you know, going to physio or getting treatment or in the bathroom or something. We just missed them. So then we did eventually find a patient to talk to and we were practicing our blood pressure taking on them. And I have a really hard time finding some pulses. I can't really find the brachial pulse, which is the one in the arm. And then I couldn't find it. So then I asked my classmates if they could find it, but then I felt kind of better because they also couldn't find it. I'm still extremely clunky using the cuff and like making sure everything goes on right. So I'd love to get a bit more slick doing that, but that will just come with practice. But it was cool. I feel like I'm getting a bit better at navigating the system and I don't feel so overwhelmed by the computer system and the paperwork, which I was really intimidated by on the first day. So it does feel like I'm picking it up kind of quickly. I'm so grateful about the coronavirus response in Victoria. 
We're super lucky that it's at the point where we can basically do everything we want. I'm also super grateful to be studying this course. I'm having so much fun doing it. I feel very lucky and very grateful to be here. And lastly, but not least, I am so grateful for all of you. It bowls me over that people watch my videos. I am so grateful that anyone would spend time watching any of the videos I create. It makes me feel so happy to be able to help you guys figure out your med school journey. You really enrich my life. So thank you very much. This is me practicing being okay with touching my vein because I have to do my vena puncture thing next week. And although we're just practicing on dummies first, I just need to get used to this creepy feeling of touching veins. I was getting through my lectures at a pretty good pace today. I was going over some stuff about diabetes management. So all the different types of drugs that we have for type one and type two diabetes. And when would you favor one or the other? I honestly feel like I'm living the dream because I am literally living my dream, which is easy to forget when I'm in piles and piles of work. So it's just nice to remind myself that. At one point we were visiting a patient who had some anal bleeding. So myself and a couple of other people were helping to rotate the patient so that the doctor could have a look at what was going on. And that was actually quite confronting. That's the first bloody scene that I've seen here. So the doctor had to do a rectal exam and I was like, okay, I guess this is happening now. I did feel a bit confronted and I kind of froze. I was like, okay, this is happening. Just be cool, Shima, be cool. Um, and it was fine, it was so fine. Being the person to do the exam, that's gonna be a whole other experience. But so far, I can be a room around it and it seems not so bad. I had a massive, massive deer in the headlights moment and I felt so stupid. It was me and my friend Ali, who's in my year, and then the MD4 student and then our intern. And between floors, because we were going up the stairs, she mentioned that we were going to do a septicemia screen on someone who they thought had like a blood, an infection. And then she asked us, what do you need to order for a septicemia infection? And I just froze. She asked like 10 questions in a row and I couldn't answer any of them. Thankfully, my classmate Ali could answer them, saved us both. But I just, I don't know what happened. I just froze. And the longer that I stood frozen, the more I was like, I just can't answer anything. And there were quite basic questions too, which made it even more embarrassing. So like, what would you order? I was like, a blood test. And she's like, where, where else can you get infection? And I just couldn't think of where that happens. And then my classmate was like, the brain. I was like, oh, duh, in the brain. Like I knew that. And then in the urine, and I was like, fuck, yeah, I guess I knew that too. And I, I think it's also so much more awkward because we're all wearing masks. So when you just see this and like no expression, it's like, what the heck's wrong with you? Why aren't you saying anything? Anyway, so that was my morning. Now I'm really terrified and I need to go look up septicemia screening. So I'm never in that situation ever again. While it was scary and embarrassing at the time, I do like that pressure because it really, really helps me to learn. So all of last year when we were doing our clinical skills classes from home, my first semester teacher, she was really lovely and she never put us on the spot or anything like that. When I had my second semester teacher, she was a lot more strict and she would single us out in the class. She was also lovely. She just had a different teaching style and I found that really useful and I found myself way more motivated to learn when I had that fear of public humiliation on my mind. After the ward rounds finished, my friend and I went to take a patient history from another patient and we just took the history like we had learnt last year. And then we went back to our desk and we we're like, oh, let's try to write it up like a long case, like this long case assignment that we heard about earlier this week. And I started writing it out and I was like, oh my God, I haven't asked any of the questions that I need for this long case. I have no idea what I'm doing. Like this sounds terrible. I started to feel really flustered when I realized how little I'd asked in terms of the long case. And I felt really embarrassed. And then I was like, okay, I've been working on this for so long. I'm just gonna present it now to the MD4 person and see if they can give me feedback about it because I clearly don't know what I'm doing. And so I put a full disclaimer at the start. I was like, sorry, this is the first time I've done it. I don't, I'm feeling really like, you know, when you over explain stuff when you're nervous. And then I presented it as best I could. And they were luckily really nice and encouraging. And they said like the opening was good and don't worry too much about doing all of the steps yet. Cause there's like about 10 steps. I'm not doing a very good job at explaining this because I personally don't know what it is that well yet. So I will get back to you guys on what the fuck I'm talking about. But basically he said to break it into little chunks and to work on the start part and then work on the middle part later and then work on the end part later in the year. 
So I'm just gonna do that and not overly stress myself. I'm actually really proud of myself because normally the first four to five weeks of semester is when I freak out the most, but I haven't had that freak out yet. I don't know if it's just gonna be delayed this year, but I hope it just never comes. It's already Friday, which is awesome. I've got a few more lectures to get through this week. A few more than I'd like to admit, actually. Then I'm going out to dinner with my group mates, which will be a nice team building thing because we haven't done anything together as a group yet. And then it's the weekend. I'm still amazed at the chasm of knowledge between us and the registrars. So there's med students, interns, residents, registrars, and the gap there is huge. We don't even speak the same language. They're so far beyond us. I'm just in awe at the speed at which they do everything. I just can't picture myself being in their shoes. It just doesn't register in my brain that that's gonna happen, but I guess it'll happen one day at a time. Yeah, I'm always so <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>